You will find when you start doing deliverance ministry, there's so many different types of demons. Eli, you threw the verse at me. I, got I didn't have time you. to process. I Someone just said Paul needs to be delivered. The demon of of bedwetting, the demon of thumb sucking. That's going too far. I'm bowing my back down. I would agree. I would say yeah. He's the perfect man. No, no, not perfect. <laughs> oh, in the chat, what is Paul actually doing? Oh no. I'm quoting scripture. My bad. <laughs> I feel like I was. There were things in me. My insides are tickling right now. I'm gonna no, veggies. I just think that that is so. Do you that is going I don't on an extra biblical? Okay, that's fair. Yeah. That you don't I think, think, let me I, give I think that can get dangerous. I, a person that doesn't do deliverance would think that's not. I've never been. Whoa! Wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> discernment videos. I'm like, yeah, the worst term ever. It's worth it for me to take the criticism and see people get set free. Yesterday. Who is the one that told them eat this fruit even though God said not to? Okay. Yes, good job. <laughs> good job, let me ask you these. Adam and Eve sin. Remember Harvey? That's when you break God's law. You did it. Good job. <laughs> that was very did you learn good. something? What's the name of that Bible? Story? So this one, this first one is like one of our favorite ones. It's the Bible in one year, and we like it because it has questions at the end. Hey, they no. did not learn healthy eating from me. Hey Nova, can I try one of your cucumber breakfast cucumbers? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen anyone get dude harvest an apple. And that's what she has. You've never eaten a cucumber before. Is no, it? not like that. I don't. I stay away from anything that comes from the ground. Oh, oh come on, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The only way I'll get that is Jamba Juice blends it up for me. Actually about to pass the church I got saved at so that you went up to the altar call yep. and you and got saved yeah the very the audible voice of God and God called me man a number of us would say we felt like we, we heard the voice of God like the still small voice yeah um, speak to us inaudibly speak to our minds speak yeah. to our hearts give us a, a picture a word a vision can you <laughs> describe just real quick like to hear the audible voice of God what is what does his voice sound like yeah so for me it's not a regular thing where I'm like, I hear the audible voice of God. In fact, when I did hear it that night when I got saved, I was five seconds ago, like quote unquote atheist and didn't, I wasn't full of the Holy Spirit. So like I didn't have the capacity to hear God whisper or like the Holy Spirit speak to me inwardly because I didn't have the Holy Spirit. I didn't have a relationship with God. So I heard it from the outside as like an audible voice. You know, the Bible says it's the voice as of the multitudes. And I honestly felt like it was like if you took a hundred people all speaking at once, it was just such a such a powerful voice and basically god said isaiah uh, you know i don't want 99.9 .9 of you i want all of you like i want your life i have a plan for you here's a, a genuine question that i have for you isaiah as someone who who focuses so much on in the deliverance ministry you discuss demons quite a bit oh are you okay by going uh to go by the term demon slayer is that I know, like a, I don't use the term. Okay, are you, I, I, you I prefer not being. Called yeah, no, a demon I don't like being called a demon slayer. First of all, I think the word slayer means to like destroy, and you can't destroy demons. The demon slayer thing happened with us four guys, which is Vlad Savchuk, Mike Signorelli, and Alexander Pagani. We all are like just brothers. We're all, all of us are pastors. All of us are just like good, good friends. Like we talk every single day. Like we're accountability to each other. All this stuff, and we changed our group chat as a joke to the Demon Slayers, because we were doing a Deliverance <laughs> podcast, and we told them in a podcast, like, yeah, we changed the name, and then everyone started calling us the Demon Slayers. That's good to, good to know. Yeah, so, I, but I, I don't not, like being called that. I, kinda, I will not refer to you. I kind of cringe, I don't know why, I just kind of cringe when people say it, because I'm like, I just like, yeah. I okay, well, I, I did. But I'm glad you brought it up. Well, okay, no, that, that is good to know, and and for the record, guys, he doesn't love being called the Demon Slayer. Yeah. Here's kind of my question, like, we've, we've gone to a few, a couple at least, of these type of deliverance services, and one of the things that I felt like I kind of took away from it it was man like this is so focused on on demons uh you know we're praying against the demon of i could start going down the list you know i mean literally the demons of different holidays demons of different organizations demons of different movies and i'm sitting there like I, at some point this starts to feel exhaustive and it, I, I feel like it could turn someone who's really invested in this into almost a paranoid 
Christian yeah. thinking, yeah. okay, oh, I, I got to quickly pray against that. There's a demon literally crawling yeah. and trying to get underneath my door. How would you respond to that? Yeah, so we've tried to counteract that by every time we do these Q&A podcasts or we talk about deliverance, and this is all, you can find 20 clips of me saying this, like, not everything's a demon. You don't need to be paranoid. There's not a demon under every rock. You're not going to get a demon from drinking Starbucks. You're not going to get a demon from drinking whatever, or a, a song plays in the mall. People are like, I just got a demon because a song was playing in the mall and I right, was walking. Literally, th these are real yeah. things. Oh, yeah, 100%. I, I, felt, 100%. I felt being there, like, yeah. I think some of these people are thinking those type of yeah. things. I think that could definitely happen, and I think one thing we always say is, whatever you teach, your followers take to the extreme. To go, stay on topic to what you're talking about, when you're at a mass deliverance service, and we, we basically promote this as, we're here to do deliverance. You have to remember, the people coming are people that really believe they need deliverance, and often they do need deliverance. So these are people coming for that specific thing. This is not like a prophetic conference or a miracle conference or a, a evangelism event or a training. So that's kind of probably why you felt that way. But if you go to my church, like say you just drop into my church on Sunday, you would probably never think this is the church Isaiah Saldivar goes to because you're going to get Bible-based teaching every week. Okay. The last few times I've preached there, I didn't talk about deliverance. Um, you're not you would never go to my church and be like, this is a hyper charismatic church or it's completely very, very normal yeah. Bible. Yeah, hundred percent. At the end of the, every service, we say, hey, if you need healing, if you need deliverance, if you need prayer, there'll be a prayer team. But if not, praise the Lord, have an amazing day. You know, go be on fire for God. You will find when you start doing deliverance ministry, there's so many different types of demons for every type of thing. And here's why. Demons names are not like our names where it's like, you're Paul, I'm Isaiah. They don't get named like that. When they say their name, they're saying their function. So if you see somebody manifesting and a spirit starts saying its name is gluttony or um, whatever, suicide or depression or anger or anything, all the demon saying is, this is my function. That is my name. That is my function. It's not saying like, I was named this. So that's why like a spirit of Jezebel functions like Jezebel function in the Bible. Oh, what's this calling go, me? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, let me take this real quick. Sorry, no, I'm interrupting that. Morgan here, let me take it and I'll, I'll get you asked. Hey, we're in the car. Just real quick. So... We went to a deliverance service on a Friday night a couple months ago with a friend. And one thing that the pastor was kind of demanding that everyone do was to repeat after him, to pray, to repent for these things, to pray for these things. And I felt incredibly uncomfortable because I was like, I don't need to repent for this. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not struggling with this or this is not a fight that I have in my life. And I've feel like we've experienced things like that at deliverance services. What do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, when we're saying like everybody renounce again, we're trying to hit a huge broad category of as many things we can think of to, to meet the amount of people. So like the last one we did, I think there was like 3000 people in Texas. So you're trying to like say everything to match those people. But I would say if you're there and it doesn't apply to you, don't, don't repeat it. Don't yeah. renounce it. I always think like I would rather renounce or repent of more mm -hmm. than less. But if you're, but if I would tell anyone, if you're uncomfortable, definitely don't repeat it. Definitely don't go with it if you're not comfortable doing it. But we do do that. We're like, hey, everybody repeat this. And then we're kind of covering all the bases again, because you're trying to cater to like three to 5,000 people right. at one time That's in like an hour and a half period. Wife is spilling the beans. Oh god. If they're sauce. If they're sauce, but I also eat like a 12 year old. Yeah, I eat like meat and cheese. if I get a cheeseburger, I'm like, I just want meat and cheese on it only. And dip it in sauce. Cheese real food. She's like, I want the scramble with avocado and onions. I'm like, no, none of that. I'll never touch a tomato. My insides are tickling right now. Let me pour this on. This is the honey butter. This is the Lord sauce. He's there raving about this this house made honey butter French toast. So good. Dude, it's so good. It's sweet. Yeah. It's the Lord's it's savory. Sauce. He's not, been watching the Food Network. It's not too heavy. He's a critic. He's been watching the Food Network. 8.9 out of 10. Let's see. Happy New Year. Yeah, bless you. Good to meet you. Awesome. You, Thank you. God bless you. Take care. Isaiah, last night was taking out the trash. Take it from there. Yeah, so I was taking out the trash last night, and uh, well, specifically, have, we had a bunch of trash. I was taking out from 
from a bunch of boxes and stuff to our dumpster, I leaned down and just felt something pop in my back, which has never happened to me before. I've had like neck stuff pop and neck issues. Um, started seeing a chiropractor, prayed for healing for for years. It's been like two and a half years of having neck issues. Real quick, I, mean, yeah, yeah, there's so, I feel like there's so yeah. many directions we could go because I want to I want to talk about what happened last night, but yep. well, let's just sit on that for a second. So two and a half years of neck of pain. Ne so stiff neck, couldn't do this. I like, couldn't look at you right now. Wow. You're someone that I, I think of when I think like we are praying confidently for healing, laying yes. out of hands. You've prayed for, I, I'm guessing just yes. many people yes. and seen miraculous healings. How do you reconcile two and a half years of not being healed? In your you neck? just wrestle with it and go, I don't know, God, but you know. And is this something that you're using to keep me humble? Is this something you're using to keep me weak? Like when Paul said, I prayed three times for the storm to leave me. And God said, no, no, no. My strength is made perfect in your weakness. So I'm like, is this something? I don't know. You know, is it is it just physical? Is it spiritual? I pray and pray. And for me, when I pray for healing, I pray every time like it's the first time. So this was praying, praying, seeing doctors, which I tell people all the time, hey, pray, believe God for healing, but also see a physician. Like Luke was a physician and wrote the most supernatural book in the Bible, the book of Acts. Ooh. So finally, by the way, we are on our way to the chiropractor yes, right now. Yes, we are going to the chiropractor. <laughs> Yesterday, something unprecedented happened. Yeah, it was not I, neck related. I was taking out trash in our dumpster and I leaned over to grab something and felt, I felt like it was audible. I don't know if it was, but I felt a super loud pop in the low, my lower back, which I've never had happen in my entire life and just immediately excruciating pain, couldn't move, my legs were tingling, ended up coming oh to the chiropractor goodness. in extreme pain, was gonna throw, the pain was so bad, I have a high pain tolerance and I, I was like gonna vomit because the pain was so bad. How are you doing right now? I'm good, I mean it still hurts, but it's, we're gonna power through and <clears throat> God's just keeping me humble, bro. God, I was like, Lord, whatever you're trying to say, I don't think God caused it, of course not, but I'm like, Lord, whatever you're trying to do through it, just keep me humble. Keep me humble, keep me weak. His grace is sufficient, his Absolutely. power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more in my infirmities because when I am weak, preach. He is strong. <laughs> there. I'm driving, bro. Hey, I'm driving. <laughs> all right, you get a pass. You get a pass. It's okay. All right, so we are at Baker Family Chiropractic. All right, let's come in. Okay, thanks. How's it going? Hey, good morning. I got my crew with me. All right. <laughs> How's it going? How are you feeling? Fun? Good, good. Better? A lot better. Still uh, bending and stuff hurts, but it's like 75% better than it was last good. night. My legs were like tingling in my feet, and then when I walked out, there was no tingling. Oh. <laughs> that was not fun. There we go. Good. see if I could squeeze in a quick adjustment. Can we talk about Isaiah's style? Because he, he, no, no, I've, no, I've noticed this before. He's got a very distinct, I would call it, West Coast uh, active wear. Active kind of snowboard. Uh, you got the bands going on. Tell us about this. I used to wear it growing up. I was in a metal band, so bands was like the cool thing. And yes. then recently my wife's like, you need to get a pair of bands, and I fell in love with them again. Now we're getting a little controversial. Would these be considered skinny jeans? I mean, I, they'd be considered Jeans that fit my skinny legs. <laughs> I don't have skinny jeans. I have skinny hey, legs. You know, I'm an I'm an advocate for skinny jeans, but I know some pastors more in the. Yeah, I'm a skinny leg guy. So some pastors I'm say guys leg. guys should not be wearing skinny jeans. I push against it. <laughs> I just think I have skinny legs. <laughs> yeah, they he's don't want to see my legs. He's refusing to say. But they're definitely I say skinny that jeans. They are skinny. Levi skinny. <laughs> yeah, they're five eleven. Levi five elevens are, are skinny. Are, yeah. This is Jared. Hello. This is Paul. Hi. Paul. Is nice good? to meet you. you. Morgan. Morgan. Nice and to meet Tamara. you. Hi, Tamara. Nice, nice, nice to meet you. you. So they're the two awesome YouTubers. Yeah. Um, you guys charismatic at all? Is that <laughs> you you okay? They're thing. just hyper charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> you like how I answered for you guys? Yeah, they yes, are. Yes, thank you, Isaiah. Thank you. Yeah, that was a fair answer. Dude. Okay, so what I thought would be cool, I've never done this before. Okay. I do it in my personal life, I have it done on stream is um, praying scriptures. Have you ever like done that before? Yeah. So I have all these scriptures here. I mean, I have I have a lot. Holy cow. <laughs> I know, dude. I put too many, but you know me, I kind of overdo it. So, so if I don't want to pray one, I can just skip it? Yeah. 
Or can I cherry pick all the good ones? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, you do the song of Solomon Wynn. Uh, yeah, it'll be good. Let me set the mic up. Let me have you sit down, Jared. I'm just gonna line you up really quick. Okay. He's like, it sounds down. like a panic attack. <laughs> <laughs> Cover that, dude. Every inch to me has to be perfect. I'm so perfectionist. He's a perfectionist. I'm, I am, bro. If it's not perfectly lined up, ugh. All right, stay. That's so, are you comfortable there? Do your mic real quick. So, we're gonna go live for an hour, and we're gonna pray and teach. Without a prayer life, you just won't survive. So, that's kind of what these streams are for. And then tonight, we'll do the podcast, and my brother will be here running it. Dude. Yeah. You're back. You're walking. I know. I'm powering through. No complaining. I'm just powering and through. You guys are live. Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. We're not doing it. Oh, let me just adjust this because. Um, okay, so you are. We're starting. Here we go. Thank you, Lord. All right, Holy Spirit, help us. Be with us, Lord. We pray you'd be glorified, God. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. The stream is working. God, I pray that prayer meetings would rise up. I pray families. I see families together praying. I see some of you Come in the on. chat. You're going to start bringing your friends over, bringing your family over, and making your home a sanctuary for God. Ooh, that's good. Making your house an altar for God to show up. Change. What else do you have but God? What else do we have in this life? We've given everything. Jesus said, if anyone wants to come after me, he must lay his life down. Like, these are the five things I did. Like, <laughs> oh ball, <laughs> I'm so hyper-focused. Like I always tell Jared, I'm like, I can only do one hobby at a time because I get too focused on hobbies. So if I have two or three, it's game over. Hyper-focused club right here. Are baby. you like that too? Oh my goodness, yes. We might be twins, dude. We're like in the same age, same upbringing. <clears throat> Am I just yeah. looking, like opening the door? I mean like... <laughs> Uh, it's filming right now. Okay. The variety of facial <laughs> expressions. I don't know what to do. Like maybe even like standing like here. <laughs> Pretend we're yeah, meeting we're for the first time. This is good. This is yeah, good. you should yeah. film this. All right, we're yeah, meeting yeah. for the first time. Ready? Okay, great. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? That's just awkward. So cute. If I open, you wouldn't both be just standing there staring at <laughs> yes, me. Yes, we would. Right, here we go. Hey. Welcome to my crib. <laughs> Hey guys, how's it going? <laughs> Dude, this is so awkward. This is gonna be the best part of the whole video. Part of the fun of if we go with this thumbnail is like the anticipation. So just yeah. take a video and we'll do it all natural like we're just meeting. Action! What's oh up? God. What's up, dude? How's it going? Hi, side Christian side hug. Dude, I don't know. You're acting like a model. You're like, what's up, bro? Okay. Ah. I can't help it. And go. Hey, what's up, dude? How's it going? I can't. Actually, we were we knew you were just pregnant with Justice because you woke up at 10 a.m. at 10 a.m. crying. Like I'm talking about not dramatic, like crying. Like, I need steak nachos. Yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> My baby is 10 in the morning. Where am I getting steak nachos? Please go get me steak nachos. And then we yeah. found out we were pregnant for the first. <laughs> Did you so get good. her steak nachos? Mm -hmm. I think I went and got myself. We went, no, no, we went that day and got some. It wasn't at 10 a.m. though. Here's the, a genuine question I had. I would say in the last month, there's been maybe three times where I'm just going throughout my day and maybe something happens that I didn't want to happen and I notice like, like I get angry. Yeah. And I'm like, I, I know pretty quick, like, okay, that's, that's not of the spirit. Yeah. What would you say say to that? When does it when does it become he needs to be delivered I think it from a spirit? It, I think it when it becomes habitual and uncontrollable, where you know it's not you. So you say this anger. I, first of all, why am I getting angry over something so small? Something takes over me or comes over me, and it feels like it's not me being angry. Something else is angry in me. That's when I would say it's probably spiritual. If you're struggling with anger. I would say, oh, it could be a flesh, could just be a sin you're going through. Cause obviously the Bible says be angry, but sin not. So there's a don't, don't time to sun, go, down go down in your wrath. But I mean, anger in essence is not a godly thing to be angry or to be mad. So and I know in those times, it's not like a righteous anger. Yeah. Like I had a friend who came to me and said, really good friend, dude, I get angry so much for so no reason. I start feeling my blood boil. I feel something just rage inside of me. I don't know what's going on. Can you just pray for me and see if anything's there? Right. It wasn't asking like, do deliverance on me. I just started praying saying, I bind the spirit of anger, you have no power. And he full on went into a rage, started 
swinging and screaming and Whoa. growling and doing everything like that. And this right? is like a, a person you're confident in. One person. of my best friends. Oh, yeah, one of my best friends. And full on manifested had like, you know, three or four guys in the room being like, we need to hold this guy down because he's just screaming and yelling and all this. What do you want from me? Right. And he didn't, but he didn't come and say, I have this thing. It was just, he was going through this, but his was probably way more intense than what you're describing. Uh -huh. He was constantly just getting in fits of rage for no reason. Like, I don't even know why I'm mad about that. Like my wife said something and it just made me, or my girlfriend or whatever, or my kid just made me so mad and it's so petty. I was like, this can't be me. You've gotten a ton of criticism. You've addressed it a number of times. So I'm not trying to beat a dead horse. No, I don't, I don't mind it. Not you, you specifically necessarily, just deliverance in general. When you hear, a, a good amount of Christians that would say like confidently, I, I look at scripture and do not see precedence for how a Christian indwelt with the Holy Spirit could also have a demon living inside of them. These people would admit the oppression is real. Yeah. The battle not against flesh and blood, like, but against the rulers and principalities in the heavenly realms. There is a very real spiritual realm that is coming after us at all times. Yeah. But the idea of being having a demon inside where there's also the Holy Spirit, that's just really... That's that's hard for me. Like I, I'm yeah. not there. Yeah. So, but but you would still like make a really strong. Case I would say. Absolutely. I would say a few things. I would say number one, I don't see anywhere in the Bible where Jesus cast a demon off of anybody. So if it's mm. on you, then he'd have to cast it off of you. And there's no such thing as casting demons off. He always cast it out, meaning it was in them, right? I would also say I don't see anywhere in the Bible where a Christian can't have a demon. Where there's a verse that says you cannot have a demon if you have the Holy Spirit. We don't see that in Scripture. The other thing I would say is. The demon in you is not in the same location as the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is your spirit. You're dead spiritually. You come alive in Christ. You're born again. But we're not just soul or spirit. We're body, soul, and spirit. So the Holy Spirit's in your spirit. We have a body, which is physical, which I also believe demons can go into your body. But you're also soul, which is mind, will, and emotion. So I, I believe the demons go in the soul, not in your spirit realm. So is there a demon where the Holy Spirit is? No. Is there a demon next to sharing a room? No. The demon's in your mind, your will, and your emotion. Can you have a bad thought? Yes. Can you have bad emotions? Yes. Can you have a bad will? Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you're a Christian. How could you have a bad thought? Well, because my mind's still subject to renewal, still being renewed by the word of God. In the New Testament, there is no distinction between possession or oppression. Those are man-made English terms. The Greek word for having a demon is to be demonized. And that word literally means to be under the power of a demon. So you'll never find in scripture where Jesus says, that guy's oppressed and that guy's possessed. You're only going to find the Bible saying the person was demonized. And in the case of demonization, Jesus always cast the demon out. So just coming back to me, I'd say maybe three times in the last month where I've just felt very real. Like it's not like it lasted like all day, but it was one of those where it's like, man, like I definitely, this isn't normal. Yeah. Well, when do you decide? Paul, you right have, now, have I would, I would, if, if I was you, I would just be like, uh, I would text one of my friends like I did two months because ago. Because I, I believe that it's just the flesh. Yeah, I would text. To... Okay, so I would text one of my friends like I did two months ago and said, hey, bro, I'm going through this. I'm having, I'm just feeling super lazy and lethargic for no reason. It doesn't feel like me. Can you pray for me? And he met up with me and prayed for me for an hour. And I'm like, okay, cool. I feel good. And if nothing's there, nothing's there. If we pray and nothing happens, cool, there's nothing there. What's like to me, what's the worst thing that can happen is you get delivered. That's like the best thing that could happen. So I mean, yours was was just kind of an idleness because of the flesh. It wasn't it didn't cross over into like a, a No, idea. I literally felt like something was there. Oh, oh so you so you do feel like that was I feel like there was something there. I don't know where it came from, why it was there. And I'll even say this, I've never said I haven't said this publicly or made a video on it, anything like that. I was literally getting prayer from my friend and as he's praying for me, this is like a few months ago, right? Yeah. And there's no like open sin in my life. There's nothing I'm doing that I'm like, oh, there's just compromise and open door for the devil. Right. I heard a, a literally a name or a word in my head I've never heard before, Argon. I was like, Argon? I've never heard that in my entire life. I don't even know what Argon means. So I'm like, Argon. And as he's praying for me, I'm hearing that. And he's like, What do you why do you need prayer? And I said, I've just been feeling lethargic, lazy, no motivation, just like I mean, those things aren't really sin, but I just feel like it's not me. Why am I feeling like I don't want to do anything? I look up the word argon. I don't know if it was Greek or Latin. This is literally the definition of the word argon. The argon means lethargic, lazy, and no motivation, which I just got on telling him. Now he's praying for me and a random name is in my head and I look up the name and I can find the picture for you. And it's a definition of a Latin or Greek word, meaning lazy, lethargic, and no motivation. And I just got on telling him that's what I'm feeling. And then that name pops in my head. So to me, did I just make up that name that somehow was a Latin or Greek name I never heard of and it meant exactly what I'm going through? Or was there something there that I didn't know was there that I knew wasn't me? And then he prayed for me and I felt free. I was like, oh, nothing. I didn't talk and say, this is my name. It was none of that. I just felt like, okay, something left me and I feel free and great. Let's move on. And that was the first time I've gotten that type of prayer in 
11, 12, 13 years. The yeah. last time I got delivered was 13 years ago. So I'm not going every other week being like, I need to deliver yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just knew, I told my wife, like, I just have no motivation. I didn't want to stream. I didn't want to, yeah. like, I, I just wanted to sit on the couch all day and do nothing. I'm like, this isn't me. I'm active. I'm moving. How to pray for me. It wasn't dramatic. It wasn't just put on worship music for an hour. Let's pray. Let's go to war. And that happened. And I felt breakthrough and I haven't felt that way since. So like, I've never shared that story before publicly. I, I appreciate you. I have a whole list of I like arguments and I'm like hey, trying to just be. Hey, look at this, look at this, look at this. Best friends forever. Best friends Even forever, though he doesn't man. believe in deliverance. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Honestly, some of my best friends don't believe Christians have demons. I'm like, Who? I don't care. I won't they won. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. They cool won. off everybody. No, Here's the thing, dude, it doesn't matter. It's not a salvation issue, it's a secondary issue. I have friends on my podcast that don't believe and we joke about it and I'm like, you believe they're on and I believe they're in. It doesn't even matter. It's well, can, like, I, can I just piggyback that for the record? Because I have heard people online and they, they make a huge deal about mm -hmm. that. And just hearing you break it down the way you did, even though I maybe am not like convinced to where I'm like, okay, yeah. But hearing that, I'm kind of like, okay, the position he takes, whether he's right or I'm right. I'm right, but glad, yeah. yeah. Whether he's right or I'm right, like that is, I, I think just pers on a personal level, and Morgan, you tell me what you think, mm -hmm. Morgan, but I'm kind of like, all right, but I, res I respect what he's saying. I see, I see how he could come to that conclusion, his own experiences, his own d delivering, deliverance mm -hmm. with other people. Like I totally see how he could come to that place and I respect it. Yeah, but I appreciate Paul, it. But Paul, do you not believe in deliverance? Do I not? How about this? Do you believe in healing? Wow! This became Paul. Oh, 24 hours with Paul. Like he's getting sweaty. He's getting sweaty. So we should, think, what's the question? So he's we never been delivered and you more. have yeah. no. We exactly. should definitely talk about this. So how did this come about? That's what I'm talking no, about. No, we should about. definitely talk about this on the podcast tonight. I believe, yeah, God delivered you from oppression. I don't think I'm at the place where I could say like there was a demon inside of you that got cast out necessarily. I do think there is demon possession. You so think yeah, she you had demons deliverance. in her. I am open Were you to, at the deliverance? I was not. Oh. I'm open to it, but, but we're I were married. We were, I, I, I would say that there yeah, was, the there was, right, I saw the fruit of it, absolutely, mm -hmm. I'm here to testify to the fruit of it. There was oppression, it was lifted off of her. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not quite at the place. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm not at the place. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like there's like, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Do you think demons came out of you? Or do you think you just got sent Oh, you, you, you really do. Because yeah. we haven't really talked about it that much of like, yeah. other than... Did you have any like manifestations or was it just... I... Like began. I gotta get this off of me. <laughs> <laughs> no. I began like weeping. What I felt was just like this insane weight just lift. Like mm -hmm. I felt like I could breathe. Mm -hmm. Like I wasn't breathing before. But I do believe. I feel like I was. There were things in me, which is like really like crazy to think about. And it's always been crazy to think about because I was walking with the Lord, like in that whole period of my life, we were plugged into a church, we had accountability, mentors, I was in the word, but yeah. Hey guys, hope you're enjoying this new video. We are so excited for this project and you guys, we just wanna make it clear, like we believe that this project is a need in the online Christian community and we can't do it without our patrons, without our one-time donations. We cannot do it without you all. So if you believe in this project, uniting the body of Christ, become a patron of ours at patreon.com slash Paul Morgan Show. Join at any tier, huge, huge blessing, or you could join at the $24 tier, which is everything 24 hour related. Early release watch parties where you get to watch every new episode early with us, behind the scenes, bonus footage. <laughs> Consider supporting and let's hit this project out of the park. Thanks guys. Now back to the episode. What you were yeah, saying people. earlier about like, our followings tend to be like incredibly ex the like most yes. extreme of yeah. these things, and so we have to try to like bring them down. Yeah, <laughs> I was saying like a lot of times we have to keep reiterating: not everything's a demon. You don't need to keep going for deliverance because whatever we teach in moderation, our followers take in excess mm -hmm. and they like ramp up. So See, if we that's say part of the kind of the issue, they yes, sit what's and watch on hours yeah, of yeah, this exactly. Specific thing, and they're not like getting the full. I'm, I'm scared of some yeah. of the, the Christian followings online. Well, I mean, people get very passionate. Your ministry has touched their life. It becomes not a bad way, but I mean, it becomes very like cultish in that they're like, this is the guy that preached and I got saved under. So they become very loyal to that and it becomes 
all about the person. What we're trying to do, and I said this earlier, is like, it's not about me, actually. It's completely not about me. It's about you. It's about the body of Christ. It's about Christ. I know we're back and forth on like, hey, deliverance. We're going to talk later about what you guys think about deliverance, and we'll get into some into some debate on it maybe Ooh, but i definitely debate. yeah i definitely love the testimony all right wow. so i want to talk about for some reason somebody <laughs> wanted us to talk about yoga why are we talking about yoga oh what is boy. your guys's view on uh, yoga i'll give you my view you guys had in your trailer to your project Corey asbury talking about or vlad who's one of my best friends love vlad so much saying yoga is demonic which I'll say that a million times on record. I've said that like in 20 of my podcasts. <laughs> and then Corey, is it Asbury? Asbury? Corey Asbury. Asbury, Asbury the Raspberry. Okay, saying <laughs> how stupid, is this his words? How stupid it is. He said, it's, he said it's asinine. Oh, okay. Which is that, is that the same thing as stupid? It was a fancy way to say it. Pretty much. How dumb it is for Christians <laughs> to say or preachers to say, well, I mean, I guess he's talking about me too. Mm -hmm. I'm not offended, but he's, he's wrong. About you. To basically say <laughs> it's dumb to say yoga can open you up to demons. Yeah, my wife's going to fight Corey. So I think I know exactly what he said. He said, how asinine is it okay. to say that if you have a, a daughter, Your daughter that does yoga, that she's going to get possessed by an Eastern spirit and go off the rails? Yeah. yeah. Which literally, I can name three girls right now that that exact thing happened to them. Whoa. And they were new age teachers and they had thousands of followers, and yoga was the open door into the occult for them. And they went off the rails. And all three of them said yoga was the gateway, spiritual gateway drug into the new age movement. Not trying to call no one out or, you know, get a reaction <laughs> clip, but Corey's. <laughs> Extremely wrong on this one. <laughs> Yoga is demonic, and when you do it, you're opening yourself up to demons because it was created with the intention of praying to Hindu gods, and the stances are prayer stances. Namaste is I bow to the divine in you. It's all new age. It's all demonic. It's all satanic. What would you say about people or someone who's just like, I do stretching? Stretch. Stretch until every bone's limber. <laughs> You can perfectly, <laughs> in fact, okay, I'll tell you from a new way, uh, three yoga teachers told me this, ex-yoga teachers, all three of them said the poses in yoga are not healthy for you. It is not healthy to do the double dog, triple dragon, back twist, where your back's oh, bent and you're lifted up. They're not healthy poses for you. So to argue that it's healthy, I, I think that you could push not. back on that. No, no. Okay, listen, were you I, a yoga teacher? All I'm saying, let me crunch this. <laughs> no, he wasn't. Were so you just... ever a yoga teacher? Let me, crunch, <laughs> let me crunch this cough drop. <laughs> Hold on, right, you, listen, you didn't need that. I spent... A long time trying to work out the back issues yes. I had for the last 10 years. And you don't have to do yoga to do some similar yeah, no positions problem. where I think a lot of experts would agree that it is helpful in strengthening certain... Like a physical therapist would yes, say, hey, stretches, do these stretches. But so, not, yeah, what about that? You, that's you, fine. You go into a chiropractor. Stretch until your heart's content. You go crack into, your back, you walk You go into a it. chiropractor, and I, I would say some may say that Chiropractic? No, would, no, bro. So no cracking one your that. back and realigning your spine. No one would say that chiropractic has some. You're reaching, brother. Some, some pagan no. origins. Oh, no, it's brother. not. I, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying maybe someone could try to make. No, that you're you're comparing apples <laughs> and saying, oranges. You could go. So you, you hurt your back yesterday, and praise God, it seems to be doing so much better. Praise yes. the Lord. But if you were to go to a, I would never go to a yoga instructor. Physical therapist. <laughs> they would give perhaps some likely. Some strengthening exercises that would be similar to but not yoga poses that yoga masters teach and yoga studios teach okay if you stretch that's one thing but when you are doing poses that were created and designed to offer worship and praise to hindu gods that's where you're opening yourself up the devil doesn't care about intentions here, so I think absolutely can be doing. You're here, not gonna get no love from this chat. Here is Trust where, me. Okay. He's looking at the chat. Does anybody agree? Listen, I, I'm, <laughs> I am hesitant to say anything because you obviously have the chat bought and paid for. Yeah, okay, they're not okay. gonna. No, the, the chat. Bro, is we've had so many ex yoga teachers come and expose it. The chat it. is awesome. I get it. Like I, I agree with you. From what I've seen, the research that I've done, the little research I've done, the origins of yoga are very pagan. Okay, let me ask you this. Oh, All no, right. no, hold on. Oh, just go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> but you could say the you. origins of many things are pagan. I think that oftentimes we kind of- I'm loading up my rifle right now. Oftentimes <laughs> we- we I'm putting another shell in. Pick, listen, listen, listen. Go we, ahead, go we pick and choose what pagan things we're gonna completely black and white avoid and which ones we're gonna engage in. Amen, brother, preach, brother. What we're gonna engage in to some extent. I saw a, a clip from Greg Locke that went viral. And I know you've, you've been in a movie where you guys have some mm -hmm. type of relationship where he was saying he's a, a very, passionate individual he said 
there will be no one bringing Starbucks into my yeah, church. I would never say that at my church, ever. Visitors walk in here, don't knock Starbucks out of their hands. But if you come here on a regular basis, don't make me have to say, get that out of here. That company is not only one of the most godless companies on the planet, they are full blown 1000% a witch's coven. I promise you it's the facts. I'll stake my life on it. Starbucks is witchcraft. We're not talking about drinking Starbucks. We're talking about doing Hindu, doing poses to Hindu gods. Okay, let me ask you this. Go Let's ahead. go into this. I still think that Paul's it's. A, I still grinning. think it's a fair. I think it's Exhausting. a fair. I'm not saying they're the same thing, but Paul, I think it's a fair comparison. Just, Someone in the chat just said drinking Starbucks is demonic. That's fine. So there think. are people that obviously it's not the same though. There bro, are people that not. obviously it is so black and white to them. So they might hear you saying. Well, that's a gray area. I drink Starbucks occasionally, and they would not be happy with you, just like you might not be happy with me. But you're talking about a Hindu practice versus drinking out of a plastic cup with a siren on it. I've studied it. It is a demon. It is sexual deviance. Sometimes I'm so enjoying this. Yeah, people love this. No one ever pushes back on me, so they love it. We've been like this all day, guys, but we're, we're best friends. If your conscience is at all conflicted, whatever is not done in faith is sin, stay far away from it. But I also don't want to be so quick to demonize Something that there a might new be, practice. that there <laughs> might that be, cultish. somebody could go into it to the pure, all things are pure, and say, doing some of these, I feel okay in my conscience. Someone <laughs> just said Paul needs to be delivered. Oh, Look at Angela a, oh, a lot said, of those. go back up, Nico to Angela. <laughs> go back up. <laughs> my mom said, I really like Paul and Morgan. They're great. Oh, so, your mom is in the chat. My mom's Yay! right here. Yeah. Oh, so hi. listen, who cares what anyone else says? <laughs> Paul still believes Christians could have them. They're just on you. So he's more of the pray them off. I'm pray them out. So you Paul, can be oppressed. Yeah, Paul deals with more of the soft stuff. And if you need to get real deliverance, you come over here. Isaiah, I may, uh, for our, our video when we're done here and we get you a little bit more to, to discuss a little more, I may push back on your alcohol take. Yes, please feel free. <laughs> Bro, are you really trying to get canceled on my stream and talk about alcohol? Oh, I just think you go a little too far with it. Yeah. Well, the Bible oh. says it's snake venom. Um, so, yeah, if you like snake venom, then drink. I don't care. I just saw Jesus, you know, <laughs> dipping, uh, turning the water into wine is yeah, his first let's miracle. Let's talk about and it. Well, pass, back passing, going like a... passing the fruit of the vine. I could give you two pass, verses that will blow that out the of the water. Passing the fruit of the vine and Paul saying to Timothy, drink a little wine. Everyone in for my your chat freak, saying alcohol is bad, no alcohol. For frequent illnesses, yeah. the Apostle Paul. Paul, do you drink? I'm not even going to say if I drink oh, or not. Oh, man. All right, guys. I think this is the time we go eat. I'm not even going to say it. We go eat. <laughs> Don't drink, chat. It. Drinking alcohol is bad. It <laughs> kills brain cells. Most violent crimes are due to alcohol. Uh, most accidents are due to alcohol. Look at Tammy. He's like, yep, say it, brother. It destroys, <laughs> um, it destroys your destroys liver. Your it makes you make decisions. Well, if you it get put, wasted it, it, on a daily it, basis. It puts you under the influence. <laughs> Listen, uh, maybe what you guys are saying, like, when you take it to an extreme is absolutely true. Oh, those but are not why, extremes. Why did Paul tell Timothy to drink it? Because the water was uh, making him sick. And so the Why did Jesus turn fermented. the I could, send you, I could send you an amazing <laughs> sermon on how the wine wasn't fermented. I'm and just getting saying, I want to encourage you guys. I want to encourage you all to not take something that is very much a gray area. It's not. And turn not. it into a black and white thing. I think we can be, that can be a dangerous game to play. No, no, no. Let Beer me a the mocker, verse. wine a brawler. Those who are led astray by them are not wise. No. Nope. Led astray by them. Are you led astray by them? Do you have propensity to be led astray by alcohol? Don't touch it. I'm going to give you a but verse, But can you brother. do it in moderation and be clear in your I'm gonna conscience? I'm going to give you a verse. I, I got a verse yes. for you, brother. Let's I go would to New say King yes. James. Oh, in the chat, what is Paul actually doing? Oh, no. I'm quoting scripture. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> you are see. ridiculous. Solomon in Proverbs, which is inspired by God, says, wine bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. The question is, would you allow a serpent to sting you stream on stream right now or a viper to bite you? No. So that's why you shouldn't drink wine. All right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> don't drink. The Bible's clear. The New King James Version says so it all. Funny. I really do want you guys to subscribe to the 24 Hours. It's going to be good, interesting. You're going to hear from people you don't agree with and look at what their life looks like, and they'll tell you why they believe what they believe. The goal is to bring unity. I should do a little spokes thing for you guys. You the goal, we might have you do that. The goal is to bring unity in the body of Christ and to show differing opinions. And guys, we don't have to hate each other because we differ on certain things. Um, we're still going to play pickleball tomorrow. And Paul's still going to whoop me at pickleball. I got to be honest. <laughs> Paul and Morgan, we had a great time with them. Ooh. We'll see the episode soon. We did it. Are we on? Are we on? Yeah, you're on. That, that was, was so everybody good. loves you, Paul. Two hours. <laughs>
<laughs> two Except hours. Said, Bye, Paul. Don't come back. <laughs> oh, there was no. listen. There was a little joking. bit of savagery. Sure. There was a little bit of savagery <laughs> nice, in the live. Dude. Make sure you get this on video too. <laughs> get it on video. What did I tell you when we were writing the notes? I said, "Do you want to talk about yoga?" What did I tell you? Uh, and they will say, "Crucify." Him. <laughs> That's what I said. <laughs> she and remembers. Why does she remember everything? You threw the verse at me. I got man. some I didn't for have you. Time to process. I got some for you. This one's gonna hit you. Let me use the restroom. You ready? Well, one sentence. One sentence. Are you ready? Good. I wrote this down for my video of alcohol. Whatever I do in moderation, my kids will do in excess. That's Think nice. about that. It's true. true. It's, it's a thousand true. percent true. Let me ask this question. I gotta go. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done with you, Paul. You're not off the spigot yet. <laughs> I haven't you had it. Yeah. We can do no, that that work, this back in the back. I had my friend recently, she said that she spoke in tongues one time, but never did since. And she said she didn't feel like she was in control. Like she yeah. she like couldn't stop until it chose to stop. <laughs> like yeah. her body chose to stop speaking in tongues. And she asked me if that was my experience. And I said, no, like I could speak in tongues right now. Yeah. Um, and she was like, well, what is the difference? Like, was my tongues real and yours wasn't or, or what? And I didn't really have an answer for that. <laughs> I think sometimes the spirit overtakes you. I don't think it's very common. Like when I started speaking in tongues, people were like, tongues are demonic, tongues are this. I didn't even know what tongues were. I heard it one time in my life when I was four or five years old, I had a core memory mm -hmm. and I was an atheist and then called out to God, God responded, changed my life. And I immediately started speaking in tongues and didn't know what it was. I was literally trying to cover my mouth because my girlfriend was next to me and I'm like, what am I saying? What are these words? What language is this? I didn't know tongues and Corinthians. I didn't know the Bible. So I'm like, what language is coming out of my mouth? Yeah. For me, it overtook me. So I never had to try or ask for it. Yeah. But for most people, it doesn't happen that way. They have to actually sit there and then they feel something bubble up. The Bible says the Holy Spirit's like a river of living water that bubbles up. And if they feel bubbling up and then they open their mouth and tongues come out of them. Mm -hmm. So I tell people when it overtakes you like that, I would say, if you can't pray in tongues again, ask God for a baptism of the Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible says don't be filled or drunk with wine, but be filled with the Holy Spirit instead. So it's like, how often do people drink? When I was in the world, I drank every day. So if I could drink alcohol every day, I could be filled with the Holy Spirit every day. Another thought I have, the Bible says when you prophesy, take turns prophesying. The prophet or the one prophesying is in control of their spirit. So prophecy, contrary to popular belief, is not... I'm just going to prophesy and it's going to come out of my mouth. No, the Bible says you can actually take turns. Prophecy is not spontaneous. You actually have control of your spirit and you can prophesy one by one. So with tongues, I believe we're in control of our spirit and we can start speaking in tongues when we want. Like mm -hmm. it's by faith. It's like a light switch we can turn on and off. When you look at 1 Corinthians 12, most people don't realize the nine gifts of the spirit are actually not nine gifts. There's only three gifts. The rest are all manifestations of the spirit. So Paul says like, these are manifestations of the Holy Spirit and that's how he manifests. So when the Holy Spirit wants to manifest in healing and tongues and prophecy, he can manifest. And that She might experience that where the Holy Spirit was just manifesting out of her and she was like, I feel like I can't control this. Mm -hmm. But I would say it's not super common that happens. Yeah. So I wouldn't preach people like, just let the Holy Spirit overtake your body because I just don't see that happening all the time to people. Right. I feel like a lot of people like just feel like they are not in control of their mind or their spirit. Like people who yell out in church yeah. or... or laugh really loud or stuff and they're like i just don't have control over it and i believe that the holy spirit can take over in that way but i don't think it's like that common no yeah it's not where a lot of people that are doing that sadly to say i believe god can do whatever he wants but a lot of it is for attention it's to feel spiritual mm -hmm. and some people just get caught in the euphoria of like this feels really good to do my point is we lack discernment and you're seeing people slither we are at one service where a guy was making bird noises that's not the holy spirit the holy spirit is not making you bark He's not making make bird noises. He's not making a joke of it. He's a Holy Spirit, not an animal spirit. So a lot of pastors in the hyper charismatic church, I've seen over and over, they lack discernment and people manifest demons mm -hmm. and they call it the Holy Spirit. I mean, flat out. And again, I'm not trying to offend anybody. And even some of the laughter, I'm like, one of the big symptoms of someone manifesting a demon is the demon starts laughing and making a joke out of it, making light of it and getting attention. Man, I don't want to mention names, but the whole like laughing during the sermon it's not godly. It's it's confusion. You you bring your new friend to church and all of a sudden 30 people start laughing next to them while the preacher's preaching. They're never going to come back to that church. Yeah. So I just yeah. don't see the Holy Spirit doing that. 
that I think was very popular in 2012, 13, 14. I think it's kind of died off. I don't see a lot of churches where that's happening. Out of 13 years of ministry, I've preached in 500 churches. I've seen it genuine, just personally, one time. Mm -hmm. And it was at one of our services, Mario Murillo came and was praying for a lady. I know the lady, her husband just passed away. She had depression, she was suicidal, all this. Mm -hmm. And Mario was praying for her and was like, the Lord's taking your sorrow and turning it into laughter and joy. She started laughing. It wasn't weird, it wasn't like where you just felt, ugh. it was holy, it was right, it was like God healing her. That's the only time I've ever seen genuine, in my opinion, holy laughter. But I just feel like a lot of it is not God, you know? And I people can push back and say, you're wrong, brother, it was God, and that's great, praise the Lord. But I've seen a lot of abuses when it comes to manifestations of the Spirit. Y'all didn't expect this from Isaiah. <laughs> yeah, if God knocks me over, I'll fall over, but I'm gonna get up changed. Like, I'm not just gonna fall over just to fall over. My goal isn't to see you fall over, it's to see your life change. And if the Holy Spirit's really encountering you, there's gonna be evidence of a changed life. Have you ever watched a YouTube video um, that is criticizing a sermon that you've given or just criticizing you and your ministry and you've listened to it and thought they have some valid points or has that never crossed your mind? Um, I would say the ones I've watched, cause I, you know, I'm in rehab, I don't watch any of them anymore. I'm sober <laughs> off of watching hate videos or Heresy Hunter or drama videos, us, yeah. discernment videos. I'm like, you guys are the worst sermon ever. But Whoa. I would say, Whoa. yeah, I'm like discernment channels that don't believe in the gift of discernment. How can you be a discernment channel? But anyways, I would say 95% that I've seen are Isaiah believes Christians could have demons. So that's the point of contention. And they're from people that don't believe in spiritual gifts, that don't believe. So why am I taking criticism from someone I wouldn't take advice from? And then also, Guys like Dr. Michael Brown, my uncle who's been my pastor for 13 years, Dr. Uh, uh, pastor James Bird who's been my overseer, uh, uh, Bishop Wellington Boone. I have guys that are legends and heavy hitters and older guys in the faith. I've told Dr. Michael Brown, if you see anything, hear anything, I say anything, you can call me, correct me. And I get corrected all the time. And I just think if I'm saying something off or false doctrine, why would God not use the four or five guys that are watching my content, that are got my back that I'm accountable to, that I'm submitted to, why would they not bring correction? Why is God using some random guy in front of a green screen in someone's basement trying to get some free views off me to call me out and call me false and a heretic and a wolf and then I'm going to hell over a secondary issue when he can use any of these other guys? So I'm trying to think of a video I could think of where I was like, oh, he has a good point. Um, I don't think I've heard one. I'm not trying to be arrogant or cocky. I just can't think of a video where I was like, wow, he's right. I was wrong there that was like a public call out video. But I also stopped watching them a long time ago because they're kind of boring. They're like, Isaiah believes Christians have demons. Isaiah <laughs> believes in deliverance. Isaiah speaks in tongues. Isaiah believes in laying hands on the sick. If Isaiah believes in miracles, why is he wearing glasses? It's like, you hear the same story over and over and I'm just like, they're just boring to me, you know? It's time for some more grilling. Let's do it. There was a sermon review done by Honest Youth Pastor. Okay, the he, same guy that made the documentary. Yes, a few weeks before that he did a sermon review that you had given, I think you were, you called it, I have it on my phone, Unmasking Jezebel. Mm -hmm. A spirit named Jezebel. Now some of you might hear the name Jezebel and you grew up maybe in a religious home and you just, well Jezebel is a woman from the Bible. There's no way it's an actual spirit. But I'm going to show you in scripture how Jezebel, not only we encounter her more than anyone else. I was at a church. One of his concerns that is also a concern of mine is that uh, you were going through the story of Jezebel, Ahab, Elijah. I felt like you, this verse did not explicitly point to a spirit of Jezebel and you were kind of going beyond the text to make a point of the spirit of Jezebel did this, the spirit of Jezebel, it's been passed on through generations and you see it showing up in the New Testament. The spirit of Jezebel can affect this in your lives. And it was just like, in my mind, an honest youth pastor kind of had a similar criticism you were going beyond what was there in the actual story yeah. to make it more about demons, about the spirit of Jezebel and so forth. Okay, so my response to that would be the sermon was literally on a de about a demon. So this whole entire sermon was about the spirit of Jezebel, which I believe is a spirit and I've encountered it hundreds of times. And when I take texts about Jezebel, I'm not saying this text is a demon of Jezebel. I'm saying the spirit of Jezebel functions like Jezebel functions. So example would be, She's after the prophets. Jezebel in the Bible, not, not the spirit of Jezebel, Jezebel in the Bible. In the flesh. Yes, the actual Jezebel was after the prophets. In the same way, that spirit that acts like Jezebel is after prophets. So it's not that that text in the Bible is like, that was Jezebel's spirit. It was, that's how Jezebel functions. This is how the spirit functions. So I was paralleling them. I wasn't saying like, this 
in the actual Bible speaking of the demonic spirit. Let me say this real yeah, quick yeah, to, yeah. to answer that. You, you made a statement. I believe this was your words. You said Elijah was paralyzed. This is an example. Elijah yes. was paralyzed by the spirit of Jezebel. Yes. And to me, that's just a stretch because we do not see the you know this story in the Bible say that. We did see him getting fearful. We saw him, this mighty man, and now he's on the run. But to, to make it that specific, there's this demon, the, the spirit of Jezebel, this demonic entity, and that's what paralyzed Elijah. Well, she was Elijah. a demonic queen. She was the most demonic yeah, leader. Totally in fair all to say. Of, yeah, she was, yeah. She was, it, the Bible she talks was about how God... She Satan, yeah. Right, she was absolutely... She was a horrible, godless woman. So her woman, spirit... But... You don't think her spirit was after Elijah if she's a demonic... She's full of the devil? I just think that that is... So do you... That is going... I don't extra biblical. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. You don't I think, think, it's, I, I think that can get dangerous. I think that like Beyonce or somebody that says I'm Sasha Fierce, I think Beyonce's spirit is the spirit of the devil filling her, like a demon. So I would say Beyonce is demonic. She's led by, controlled by demonic spirits. But we don't have any evidence that Elijah was paralyzed with fear. We do from the spirit. We do. Of we do because Jezebel never met Elijah in all of the Bible. They've never met once. She sends a messenger and saying, in 24 hours, Elijah will be dead. He may have just but been the scared Bible for says, his life knowing they have the power yes, to potentially kill yes, me. It's not necessarily a demonic entity that he's paralyzed from fear. Well, from. I would say Jezebel says, sends a messenger and says, within 24 hours, Elijah's going to be dead. And then Elijah's scared, runs off and hides under a tree and asks God to kill him. He's suicidal. Lord, take my life. Kill me. I don't want to be alive anymore. So she's, he's never even met this lady. And this is the lady that's going to bring him down. So I wouldn't say, and I think you misquoted me on the Jezebel spirit was after Elijah. I think what I said was witchcraft. Like she was only giving a word and the witchcraft, the, the power, the domination of that demonic spirit was after Elijah. Well, here's the thing. My worldview is there's a God of this world and there's a God of heaven. There's a ruler of this world. And the Bible says, literally the Bible says this, everyone in the world is under Satan's control. So he's the ruler of the entire world. If you're not saved, you are under the devil's control. So I believe when you have wicked leaders, I don't believe they're just wicked leaders. I believe they are empowered by demonic spirits. Whether it's a pre uh, president, whether it's a dictator, I don't think there's any wicked leader that's not being ran by some type of spirit. So when I look at Jezebel, I don't look at her and go, she was just a wicked queen. I look at her that the Satan was using her to destroy the prophets. She was demonically inspired and she had a demonic spirit controlling her to do what she was doing God's prophets. Literally beheading the prophets, putting them on poles, making the people worship idols. I 100% stand by. She was demonic, she had a demon, and not only that, I'll even take a step further, I 100,000% believe there was a spirit of Jezebel who's not the spirit from an ancient queen, but mimics everything Jezebel did. For the record, okay. I'm, I'm catching him off guard. Yeah, he didn't, okay. he didn't know okay. I was gonna refer to this sermon, but my concern is you're okay. just kind of making some, some assumptions putting two things together, making some stretches. I'm not, I'm not bashing the whole sermon. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I appreciate That's it. Even fine. in this sermon, as usual, how bold you are. Yeah. Like that is, is something that you embody very well, but that you were taking some, some stretches or some leaps. And if we get too comfortable doing that, uh, would you say David committing adultery with Bathsheba, it was a demonic spirit that caused him to do no, that? Be Cause I think that's a great, a perfect example. And, and what I'm trying to say here is it's not always a demonic spirit coming in and taking over. The problem with David is a whole different story is David invited Bathsheba over. He forced himself on he her. Took one Jezebel sin, he took came one step Elijah. into sin after another. You could probably make a case of David was overcome by a spirit that literally caused him to commit adultery and take this man's could've life. Could have been. I wouldn't say that's wrong. I'd but like, but yeah, you could, somebody been. that's very much in kind of the prophetic preaching and in deliverance could preach that message and do something similar with David's story that you did with Elijah. Yeah, I would say, Jezebel. amen, lust is a spirit and lust takes a lot of men down and lust is a spirit. So I would agree with them if they preach that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not backing down, I would agree. I would say, yeah, lust is a spirit and lust got David, the spirit of lust. So where is their accountability then of we're fighting the flesh, we're fly, fighting our sin nature, even as Christians, the responsibility on our own part, David's responsibility, because now you're kind of saying, so I, yeah, I, I do No, I wouldn't say I, I would preach that. I would just say if a guy preached that, I'd be like, yeah, that could be possible. Lust is definitely a spirit. And, and my but point it's not is, always my, a spirit. My point is, it, could it have been possible? Perhaps, but it also could have been possible that David just gave into the flesh. Yeah, 100%. We've seen people blame 
Yeah, demons, for sure. On their lifestyle choices. Yeah. Or, well, you chose to continue to, to speak to a woman that you shouldn't have been speaking to. Yeah. Or, like, you led yourself down that direction. Do not blame this on a demon. 100%. A demon can't make you do something. A demon can give you a thought, a desire, but ultimately, you're responsible for your decisions. No one's going to stay on judgment day and say, I didn't do it, a demon made me. That's not a valid excuse. So, where you draw the line is, the flesh is the sinful nature. The flesh doesn't talk to you. So if you're battling lust, let's just use an example. That's one thing that could be a flesh. Cause of course men are attracted to women. You can battle lust and be in the flesh and not be a demon. Sure. That's one thing. So over here, let's put the flesh over here. You're sitting down eating breakfast, a bowl of captain crunch. And in your mind, you can't stop getting perverted images of pornographic things and thoughts and desires. And you're hearing voices and you feel disgusting and you can't get these images out of your head. And you're having tormenting, dominating thoughts. That to me and a voice telling you, just go do this, just go do that. That is a demon. That's not the flesh. The flesh doesn't talk. There's no biblical precedence where the flesh is in someone's head saying, do this, do that. So I would say, and we, we, crucify, I would concede yeah, that if crucify you're getting, the if you're flesh, these voices, if you're getting yes. yeah, this just crazy stuff, yes. that there is absolutely. So if you watch my videos, reality that could be anybody that watches my content will say, Isaiah constantly says, not everything's a demon. I just did a video on the difference between the flesh and a demon. The flesh must be crucified. A demon must be cast out. If you have a guy preaching an entire sermon on a demonic spirit that's what the sermon's about it's literally about a demonic spirit so you can't go well he's talking about the spirit the whole time duh that's literally what the sermon's about for the record i, I appreciate you feeling this i know that it's getting like a little bit more combative but no, I, I don't I, mind. I really I don't like because i wanted to touch on my concerns with the prophetic style of preaching yeah i rarely even preach like that now i'm always streaming and in streaming i'm giving 50 plus verses every single stream like literally go find a live stream where I didn't give 50 verses. And I, I believe that. Yeah. I believe so it. that's, that's just a different context. So people might do like, for me, when I look at honest youth pastors, it's like, why aren't you doing sermon reviews on my thousand teachings online? Do it, do a sermon review on my verse by verse. Why are you doing a sermon review on my once two months preaching at the church? So I don't know. I just, that, that is lot. fair. And I've, I've experienced sermons where it's concerned me a lot more that they would, I guess, call prophetic preaching, but it's like the whole sermon was just stuff that they were coming up with God spoke to me god revealed to me that he's about to do this in america he's about to do this over our congregation and it just ends up being like that was void of any real meat that we can stand on it was yeah. just all kind of what you think is going to happen i appreciate you taking these questions yeah of course i don't mind you can throw bro anything at me and nothing's gonna offend me i'm saying these things because i believe them so you've mentioned vlad he said and I, I saw this clip going around actually some friends back home were like paul have you seen he talked about the demon of bedwetting. Spirit of addiction, addiction to chocolate, addiction to pop, bedwetting, knuckle cracking, tantrums and fits, thumb sucking. Move in the name of Jesus right now. I feel like almost anyone could hear that and say, that's going too far. Yeah. But what are your thoughts on that? And I know I'm taking an extreme example, yeah, yeah. but it, I it's haven't out seen there. the clip, but I will say this when you do deliverance, you will realize so many things people have addictions to and struggle with have demonic spirits behind them. So let me give you an example. If you have a guy or a person that's chronically sucking their thumb, that's an adult that can't stop sucking their thumb, there could be something spiritual there. Which is a legit thing. Absolutely. I'm picturing a, a kid, yeah. like a, a ten, no, 10 no, or 12 year old. No, no, okay, so we're was... talking about chronic addictions and chronic like, very, let me give you an example. I dealt with a lady, I have it on video, but anyways, she was deathly afraid of birds. If she saw any bird, Near her anywhere, she would get in her car, cry, scream, and have a panic attack. Any bird. Didn't matter if it was right there by her car. She's walking in the yeah, yeah. Okay. That, we prayed for her. And I kid you not, she was in the deliverance. Now, her husband was like, I don't even know if I believe in deliverance. And I'm like, well, we're going to pray for your wife. She's never manifest nothing. In the deliverance, this is a normal lady, very successful. We start praying for her. She starts literally screaming, acting like a bird, flapping her hands like this. And literally says that she has a bird spirit and her husband's like, this is insane. She's like, this is insane. And she's flapping her wings. She gets delivered. And to this day, she's not afraid of birds. So you, people can say whatever they want online. Friends, family can say that's nuts. You can say whatever you want. This lady was definitely afraid of birds and she's not anymore. I've never dealt personally with a bedwetting demon or anything like that. I'm just taking off of what you're telling me. But if a, an adult is chronically sucking their thumb and they're saying something in me wants to suck my thumb, this is not normal. This is not healthy. This is weird. You say that there's room that that could be a hundred percent. I've dealt with every weird addiction I can think of 
that's been attached to demonic spirits. I when I, but, a per, but here's the thing. Yeah. A person that doesn't do deliverance would think that's nuts. They're like, that's insane. And I would agree. If I've never done deliverance, I'd be like, that's insane. There's no such thing as a demon making you afraid of birds. I'm like, yeah, it could be spiritual because I've seen it. I saw a lady who, again, was a very successful lady. We were praying for her, got on her back on all fours, put her hands like this, like a spider upside down and her head turned completely upside down. And I would say that's insane and nuts, but I saw it well, with my own eyes. Well, so it's like, to that point, you know, I, I, I want to concede this earlier, you know, we were having the debate about can Christians have a demon and, and so forth. Talking to you, talking to, I was talking to Jared earlier and he was saying like, yeah, this girl that was going to the Bible studies, she, I, I was confident that she was walking with the Lord. And then suddenly she's having a manifestation that was intense yeah. and she got delivered. I'm hearing that. And I'm like, I don't know what to do with that. Yeah. Because I, I even asked him, I was like, yeah, are you sure? Like, are you confident that this person was walking with the Lord? Right. He was like, Paul, I'm confident this girl was walking with the Lord. And I suddenly I'm seeing this manifestation, like what you'd see in the movies, yeah. her tongue sticking out, she's yeah. flopping on the floor and she gets delivered. That's making me, I, I'm not saying I'm, I'm totally, we almost got him, I'm not, saying I'm, I'm, I'm not on the Morgan record. Morgan and Tammy have been working on him. He's almost there. I'm not on the record saying I believe a Christian can have a demon, but hearing that, hearing the stuff oh, you're I have saying, lots of I, I know, I bet you do. But but even hearing Jared, who I consider uh, a little less, uh, what's the word I'm looking yeah, for? Morgan. Help me out, Morgan. Morgan, yeah, Morgan, yeah, Morgan help me out. Help me out, Morgan. I got nothing. He's My maybe a little, a little calmer. He's definitely not, but you haven't, you haven't hung out with him a, enough. A little less intense, but hearing him say that, I'm kind of like... <laughs> he just doesn't talk as fast. That's why he's yeah. He talks more intense. slowly, so I feel like I can trust him more. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hearing him say that... I'm he's not kinda, Italian, that's why. <laughs> I'm kind of like, that sounds like that could have been the reality of what happened. Yeah. If you hung around us and saw some of the deliverances we do, your your mind would be completely different. You'd be like, this is insane. I can't believe I've never seen this before. So, so are we shaking hands? So a say a Christian can have a demon. <laughs> Say a Christian can have a demon. <clears throat> I would honestly love at some point though to do deliverance and see it with if, some. If together. I stayed a month with you, I'm not telling you that you should let me stay a month with you, dude. <laughs> but if I did, and I and, and cast our demons. Well, day. if I would have saw what what Jared saw, what you, I I, I believe you yeah. just countless times you've seen this. It would maybe really impact me. Yeah, it me. would because I've seen it change lives. And I've seen, I see Jesus do it in scripture. So I have the word of God to stand on and the testimonies that are just like, it's worth it for me to take the criticism and see people get set free. Yeah. Isaiah? Amen. This was a good conversation. It's been good hanging out with <laughs> you, bro. <laughs> hug it Christians hug it can't out. have demons. <laughs> hey, how can people uh, support your ministry? Uh, you can go find me on YouTube. Go to IsaiahSalivar.com. You can Put go to links. my channel. Any of that. Yeah. We'll Put his links below this yep. video. It was if, fun. If, if they want to. 24 hours, man. It's been a long 24 hours. <laughs> but it's been fun. Wow. It's been fun. I mean, yeah, we played pickleball and did you feel I beat Paul a few times. Uh, yeah, it was good. He, it, hey, it wasn't singles. He's so. a better no. He's for the record, he's a better pickleball player than I thought he Thanks, would be. Dude. He is climbing fast. Thank you, Isaiah. Thank you, brother. Yep. Love you, man. Love you too, bro. Great, great, great conversation. You guys speak in tongues? Do you believe in it? We what both did you speak in tongues. They hold on, let me put you guys only. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> do I have a zoom for them? There we're look, we're zoomed in on you guys. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, they both. So go ahead, John MacArthur, make a video on that. I don't believe you could get <laughs> demons from drinking Starbucks, but to each his own. You don't believe that? I don't believe that, no. Liquid death though? Uh I'm not talking about that. <laughs>